Facebook as there. well. I want to welcome you tonight to our February uh, card making at the at the library um, online virtual learning together tonight. Uh, my name is Missy Shipman, and I live here in Baldwinsville, and I'm a big fan of the library and of our friend Julia, who's on our, um, who's managing all of the tech stuff tonight from the library side of things, and who I'm so grateful to partner with each month as we um, plan uh, virtual as well as in-person classes, um, sharing my love of card making and paper crafting. So welcome to those of you who are here. Um, either in the Zoom or on the Facebook. I know I got an email from Carol. She was not gonna be live with Zoom, but she'd be watching us with Facebook and with the video recordings. Hopefully that works well for others of you who have a time conflict. Um, the bag was full with a lot of goodies this month. I hope you, you, you uh, probably had a chance to pull things out and just look at, at all the goodness in there. Uh, we're gonna be using um, some of the pieces, not all of the pieces tonight. And my hope each month is that we, you kind of are inspired to gather things from your own environment that you can paper craft with. So sometimes um, a little bag of cookies comes wrapped with a ribbon on it, right? So you can tuck that ribbon in your a bag or a jar or wherever you can keep your little scraps. Um, maybe it's a favorite postage stamp that came on an envelope that you'd like to incorporate into your card. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways that you can um, add ephemera or you know favorite ticket stubs and things like that into your crafting. So whether you use this paper bag as a place to store those things or you set up your own little system, um, I encourage you to um, to keep keep your eye out for things that would work well as you um, combine media for your card making. So tonight we're going to begin with a card that. Uh, it looks in your kit like this. We're going to start with one where all the pieces are already ready to go for you. Um, this has a, a white envelope and a uh, printed card base that's white on the inside. I love that it has that gold foil printing in it. Okay. And then inside also, there's a couple little pieces, so be careful as you untuck them. We've got this gold ribbon, again, it's gonna um, complement the accents in the paper. A tiny gold sticker, which you might or may not use depending on the stamps that you're using. And then a tag and some twine. Now, what I love about this design, this, these card materials, is that the card base already has a lot of activity, right? So we're just going to simply accent it with the ribbon and with a, with a stamped tag. Now you might have something in your kit that fits very neatly into a rectangle, or you may have a stamp in your kit that you would stamp repeatedly to fill the space. It's up to you how you wanna use your materials. You also could write a favorite scripture or an encouragement verse um, to a friend on here or make it a monogram card. So even if you don't have access to stamps and ink, you can do quite a lot with paper crafting. But indeed, the stamps and ink are my favorite part. Uh, it's not a good day unless there's ink on your fingers and I'm pretty inky tonight. So let's begin. I'm going to use the Memento Tuxedo Blank black ink tonight. That's the only ink I'm going to use this evening. Um, but you'll have, if you, if you wish to stamp along and use the supplies that, were, that you're borrowing from the library, um, pull out that ink or other ink that you have in your stash so you can play along. I'm going to start with a great sentiment that's from a stamp set called Special Moments. This is a stamp set that's available as a free gift during celebration, which is for January and February this year. So this one has a ton of greetings and many of them pair really well together, sort of a larger one and then a smaller one that you could put um, it in your card as well. Sometimes we do that on the outside of the card and then on the inside, or it may be both are placed um, on the front. So the one we're going to use is called, is says, where would I be without a friend like you? And I'm gonna just place that up in the upper right portion of my tag. Where would I be without a friend like you? And then I'm using for the floral image, I'm using a stamp from a stamp set that if you attend our class tomorrow, an in-person class 
um, at the library tomorrow morning. Uh, one of your options is the Hope Kit, which has these beautiful flowers and butterflies. There are about five different kits available tomorrow that you can choose from. So I hope that you'll um, be able to join me at 10 o'clock live tomorrow at the Ballinsville Hill Public Library. If it's not too late, even if you didn't sign up ahead, you can um, contact the library uh, online even in the night. I'm pretty sure it lets you work 24 seven, right, Julia? The fancy new calendar for the library online. So now I'm, this is the floral image from the Hope set and I'm gonna stamp that down sort of in the bottom left. So I'm leaving my white space kind of in around the edges here to just give a little bit of space to rest. Sometimes when we're designing, we think we have to cover all of the space, but negative space or white space often really balances a card and gives you your, gives a sense of rest or peace to the card. So I'm going to add this, this tiny little sticker I'm gonna put in the center of my flower. So if you're working with a flower image, you might accent the center and that's just going to link it back to the design in this printed card base. Otherwise, just save that little sticker for something different um, or put it on as kind of a sprinkle somewhere on your card, like we've used rhinestones or pearls in the past. Okay, now to um, the, the ribbon is not cut with a flag edge, it's just cut straight. And I want it to look more um, with a diagonal cut here. So I'm gonna use my scissors. You wanna start with sharp scissors when you do this. Make sure your scissors are sharp or it can be kind of frustrating. Um, and then I'm going to trim off that. So I've just made a little tail here. You can see it's similar to the one in this card. And I'm gonna anchor this down with some adhesive. Tonight I have um, a product called Snail. It's similar to our current seal um, and it's a, it's a tape runner. Um, and what it's doing is just anchoring that ribbon for me. I'm going to hold it more securely with the tag on top, but it's just, if you have the Tombow multi-purpose glue, that will work fine. But because the ribbon is more um, porous, it will um, kind of suck up into the ribbon a little bit and might be sticky for a time. This, let's see if I can find my little pretty blue um, string here. This is called Baker's Twine and I love this pretty color. And I'm going to tie it through the hole, thread it through the hole. And then I'm gonna tie it just like I tie my shoe. Now, don't worry, I'm gonna remind you of the fork bow tonight that we've learned in the past. On another card tonight, we'll do the fork bow. But for this one, you just imagine you're tying your shoes, getting ready to go for a walk but stay safe on these slippery roads. My friend Devija and I have been really happy to get some walks this week while the roads are dry, at least for a short time. <laughs> so I'm just tying it like I'm tying my shoe. So I have two loops and two tails. There we are. And remember when you join us for the virtual class, um, and in-person classes, you are the designer of your, of your project. So using anything that you have from your own stash and from this kit, you can combine elements. There's no one way to do it. Uh, and what's fun to make a card that's really individual is that you can be thinking of who you're going to send that to, who, who is the special friend or loved one that's going to receive it, or a random act of kindness. You might know Valentine's Day is coming up, but also Kindness Day, that's on February 17th. And so that's a great day just to reach out um, even to people you don't know, sending um, sunshine. I'm gonna remove the backings from the dimensionals. And I'll tuck that on here. So see, that's gonna hold that ribbon in place too. I just used the other tape to anchor it there. Where would I be without a friend like you? Now, I'm, not, I'm choosing not to put a greeting inside tonight because I may wanna write a longer message. This would be a, these would be fun to send to my college roommates. Every year around Valentine's Day, I set, try to send them a card. Sometimes our Christmas cards um, get put off to Valentine's Day at my house. <laughs> so um, my goal is to reach out to people um, with Valentine's Day and Kindness Day and springtime coming. So think about who you might like to share that with. And we're gonna do one more thing to jazz it up. In your kit, you have some black and white designer series paper. Now they don't all look the same as mine. Some have flowers and leaves, uh, polka dots, but they're all 
are black and white and they're, they're a, a longer piece that, that's been folded up for you. So the, some of the patterns are a little bit dizzying, so you, uh, but I think you'll have fun. Um, what we're gonna use it for is just to add uh, some design to the card, to the envelope flap. And even though these patterns are really disparate, I think it goes well because it's linking that black ink and the black uh, print on this card. It's tying the project together. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, there were certain things you did not wear together. You know, you, certain patterns or certain colors, everybody said they clashed. But now as a grown up, I don't worry about that. Um, I tend to wear lots of things that probably people would clash. And I certainly um, enjoy um, using contrasting supplies in my paper crafting. So to do that, we're going to add some adhesive to our envelope flap, just to the flap part, flap part. And this has a nice rounded edge. Remember, if you're using the Tombow liquid glue, a little goes a long way. Think thread, right? Not worm, just a tiny thread of glue, a thin, thin thread. And then whichever side you want to show, of course, you're, you're gonna have up. So I have this other one that has fruits. I could put that on there, but I do like this pattern um, with the diamonds. So then I'm just gonna line that up to that score line where the flap folds into the envelope. And then take my paper snips and just carefully trim around that flap. Move this over so you can see, hopefully I'm on camera screen. Anybody with us is able to check on Facebook and see what things look like there. That would be helpful to us. We wanna be sure things are recorded well for you there to follow along with us. Yes, I did check Facebook and it looks good. We can Fantastic, see Julia, thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Well, we love that we can use so many different venues to share uh, both with Zoom and Facebook and YouTube. It's really wonderful to reach a lot of friends. Feel free to share the link when it's posted as well so that more people will, will be aware of this happening every month, right? So here's that, that first card, we'll set that aside. The next card is going to use some supplies. Again, they're kind of pulled from different parts of your kit. So you may have to spread out all that goodness and find these items. So I'll, go, I'll take my time showing you what we're gonna use. This is what a sample of what we might, you might create with these supplies. We need the, there's a wooden piece. It's kind of like a thick balsa wood, piece of wood. And there are some little pearls. I think yours are this larger size, I'm pretty sure. I, I ran out of those, so I have littler ones to show you tonight, but they'll be on some kind of a little um, white piece of paper like this. Should have a few, handful of those. And then you'll have a piece of um, Whisper White cardstock that has the nine, butterflies printed on it, a doily, a lace doily. These always make me think of Valentine's Day. When you were little, did you make um, Valentine's or now as a parent or grandparent or aunt, have you had a chance to make envelopes with children um, or make Valentine's with children? That was always a highlight for me. And the doilies were usually featured on those. All right, also there's a yellow ribbon, a Daffodil Delight um, seam binding ribbon. And then this card that's pre-printed on one side with the yellow uh, and white diagonal stripes. Okay, so we'll start by folding that in half. You can crease that with the bone folder or with your finger to make a nice scored fold there. And I'm going to be featuring a sweet little stamp uh, from another celebration set. It's called Catching Butterflies. And this little girl is just a happy dancing, um, catching butterflies, or you could have little hearts or anything that she's trying to catch. She could catch fish if you put the net down. And I saw a clever um, version of this where the demonstrator had cut the net apart and put it down here. So the girl was actually catching a fish. Um, you could make this into a balloon or have her holding a bunch of balloons. But in because of the butterflies that are in your packet tonight, I'm choosing to make one where she's collecting sweet thoughts of you, collecting them in her net. Now, you may not have the Catching Butterflies little girl in your collection, 
at least not yet. You can contact me if you're interested in learning more. But this doily space is a nice um, area to do some stamping. So you could choose to do an image if you have a floral or a heart or some kind of image that you wanted to put there or, or a greeting. Um, and butterflies go nicely with any kind of springtime theme. So they wouldn't have to be clustered up by the net. They could be in a row across the top or across the bot, across the side. Um, so you, your design can be whatever you'd like to make it. You will notice that the doily is bigger than the card base. So what we're doing is cutting off part of the doily and we're going to use that for another project later. So I'm going to start um, I'm not going to glue this down yet, but just to kind of get a sense of the space where I want to cut, I'm turning it over and then I'm just going to cut along, careful not to cut the, the edge of the card. It doesn't have to be exactly straight, but you want to have a little piece like this to save for another card tonight. Okay, I'm going to put it somewhere very safe so I don't forget where that is. All right. So now I, I like this very much how the doily is offset kind of gives a, um, an asymmetrical feel to the card. And I can start building with these, these things. Now, I'm, I promised you it would share the fork bow again. So um, I'm using a serving size fork tonight because I want the bow to be a little bit larger, but you can make teeny tiny bows and these are charming on projects. So to begin, we'll take the ribbon and make a scarf. Just wrap it around that fork to keep it warm on this cold night. Now the piece that's on the top is going to do all the work. This, this one that the scarf end that went across the fork. It's going to thread down through the middle tine. And then it's going to come up around through that middle tine. So I'm going to show you again. I've got my scarf. And I'm left-handed. I don't know if that really makes a difference for the demonstration. If it's hopefully it will work for you, whether you're left or right-handed, but whatever side is on the top is the one that's going to do the work. So I'm going to tuck it down through the middle and bring it around through the top middle. Okay. Then I'll tie a bow, just tie a knot. Doesn't have to be a neat, just tie a knot. Okay. Now I can slide that off and I have a sweet bow. So this one has some long tails. You can leave them long depending on how, where you wanna position this on your card. So I won't trim mine yet until, because we may decide to do it a little bit differently from, from this original one, okay? Next, let's do some fussy cutting of the butterflies. And remember, if you have questions tonight, you can write in the chat or you can unmute yourself and just jump in with a question. I love questions, they help me learn things. So I welcome you um, to interject or give any comment or compliment or suggestion um, is always welcome. So on my initial design here, I just used three of the butterflies. I'm gonna cut the rest away so I have them for something else. Or if you really, really love the coral color, you could do all three coral ones. Or if you had time and interest, you could cut out all nine butterflies for your card. Now you'll see I clip the wing ever so slightly there, but what my goal is, as I move the paper, not my scissors, but move my paper, my goal is to leave just a tiny bit of white around the object as I'm cutting. Okay, so there's one. And you'll see my, my intention is to move the paper rather than the blade of the scissors. Well, butterflies help us look towards spring. I hope you're all having a happy winter though. We don't wanna wish away the seasons. Do any of you snowshoe or enjoy winter walks? I'll be honest, I prefer spring to winter, but I've been trying to just enjoy the beauty of the snow and the calm that when we have a heavy snow, how it kind of slows things down a little bit. There's three butterflies. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and stamp on the wood. Now, depending on the kind of ink you have, it might run, it might not, um, 
it, it might uh, blur when you stamp on it, but there are two sides to the wood. So you can give it a try. And then if it's blurry and you don't like it, you can flip it over and do something different. So I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp mine, but I have an idea for if it, if uh, something else you could do if you don't wanna have it stamped. This is a, a greeting from the Catching Butterfly stamp set called, says, you make my heart happy. I love that greeting make my heart happy. So you can go ahead and use a stamped greeting on this, or if it's blurry and you're unhappy because the ink is bleeding, you could make a different kind of pattern or a different, you could put the butterflies on there, for example, or you could cut from a scrap of cardstock, cut out some words and put them on. Like, let's do that with the happy. I'm going to show you in your kit tonight um, is a roll of washi tape. And we're, I'm not actually design, didn't design projects to actually use it as a decorative tape tonight, but I wanted to show you a trick for using this tape um, and using, using it with stamps to, um, it's called omitting. Now, last month we used the same image um, on our card where we just wanted the word happy. And so I, I kind of carefully inked up just the word happy with my ink pad. Okay, but tonight what I'm gonna do is just take this tape. Let's see, I've gotta start with a clean stamp though. And mine's not clean at the moment. So I have to let's see if I can get that better. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this tape. I'm gonna cover up the words that I don't want to show. I just want it to be happy. I don't wanna have the other words right now. So I put my washi tape on there and then I'm gonna ink it up. You have to remember to take off the tape now, right? Because <laughs> you don't want that. It'll be messy. But then you can just stamp the word happy. And what I can do is carefully cut that out, this little word, and I could then add that to the wood as just an, an element, just um, glued on. So I'll go ahead and do that. So our cards are gonna look different tonight my Catching Butterflies, the Happy Girl card. That one I think I'm gonna to send to my niece, Claire. Claire lives in Massachusetts. She had her third birthday in January and um, she is an amazing little girl. Claire has retinoblastoma, which is an eye cancer. And um, right now we're so grateful she's not having any chemo right now. Every month she has an appointment, a special exam in Boston and they check um, how things are going. And if, if the tumors are, are really small, then she doesn't have to have the chemo that month or start a new round of chemo. And so she finished one back in November and we're really grateful that um, she can have a, a break, an extended time without that. So the three is kind of a lot to put on here. Maybe I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I have the two guys here. It says happy. So this is how you can kind of see that it's okay to play. And even when you don't have a, a, a complete focus of where your card is going, sometimes it just comes into play when you combine different pieces. So what is else there, could we do? For, is yeah? there any particular reason when you would stamp happy directly on the wood versus putting it um, on a piece It's of paper? only, I, it depends on the, the inks that you have in your kit are a water-based ink. And if it blurs too much, Okay. Then, then I wouldn't want you to do it. So you could test it out. And if it looks great, like mine is fine here, because but this is a different, this is an ink that's a little more permanent ink. Yeah. And so um, if you, if you, um, if your ink wasn't happy on the wood, I guess, is why you might, might do that. Great Thank you. Question. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sort of building this collage here. And I, I, I do feel like it needs something more in this area here, maybe just to put it like that. Um, I like my original design very much for Claire because of the sweet little girl, but let's put a, um, another word in there. We could do the, um, let's see. There's a fun one in here that says, thank you for brightening up my day. That, let's see if that one might fit. So basically, it's 
it's going to go across the middle there. That, that'll be fun. So I'm going to take off my um, doily because when I stamp with this, the, um, the ink would go through the doily slightly. So I'm going to stamp it up, ink it up, and then stamp onto the doily. Thanks for brightening my day. And then we'll go back. Now I can start to, to anchor things down. So I'm going to use a little bit of my um, snail adhesive, which is like a tape runner. When, when you adhere with the doily, some of the tape will show through a little bit with like a shine. Um, whoops, my butterfly's trapped under there. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so you'll see here, um, if you look very closely, there's a little bit of adhesive kind of showing through the the doily, it doesn't offend me. Um, depending on the adhesive that you use, you just don't wanna be really thick with adhesive behind the ink. Um, but oftentimes an element like this doily will be anchored down by other elements on the card. And so you don't need to really secure it very strongly. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so I, let's see. I'm gonna keep the happy just so you can see what it looks like if you decided to um, to cut, to print something with paper rather than stamping directly on there. Okay, and then I, I, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut my tails down. It's up to you if you wanna use your ribbon this longer with the longer tails, but I'm gonna go ahead. I, I think it will look nice kind of underneath the brightening up my day. Put some adhesive there to secure it. And then I can put down my happy. So this is a fun card. What I like about it is that it has this, these variety of textures. And I think it could even use some more butterflies. I'm gonna add another coral one. This, was, this, this color and that daffodil color I think are so cheerful. And this is a great time to send cards of encouragement and appreciation to people. Okay, there. Okay, so now I, I like that. I'm gonna go, I, often I do things odd numbers, but I think that because we also have the bow here, unless we wanted to add one more. What's your thumbs up in the chat if you think we should have five butterflies, one more. So it's kind of almost a wreath of butterflies. What do you think? I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this yellow one and we'll see. I like the idea of it being kind of like a wreath shape on here. There we are. Okay. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fun like that. Let's put that one there. Okay, thank you. Thanks for brightening up my day. Now you'll notice um, we haven't put the pearls on the butterflies yet. And, uh, but otherwise I've used all the elements. So I'm gonna go ahead and anchor my butterflies. Actually, um, I used um, dimensionals to pop them up. I'm gonna do that in this case too. But I wanna show you a trick when, you're, when you are at the end of a dimensional sheet, you have a lot of openings here. The, the little pieces at the end, you can just snip the, the frame of, of um, sticky that's left around the edge and use those as well. And I know there weren't dimensionals in your kit this time. Sometimes I'm able to include those. I'll see if in the future we can get some more of those for you because they are fun. The, the dimensionals add just that pop um, that, that's very pleasing. Well, this card, because it has all these different textures, it's, it, I think it's quite engaging. I've shared with you before that my husband and my sons like cards when they have things to touch on them, when they have um, embossing or different textures. There we are. Okay, so now I have my little pearls. My, I think yours are a little larger than mine, but I'm gonna go ahead and sneak them on here. Um, I use my fingernails generally, but you can also pick them up with scissors or tweezers and place them. I'm gonna see how many I have here if I have enough to do two for each or just leave one on each. 
Again, that's another texture. It's another little bit of shine. And I have enough. I'm going to go ahead and put two on each one. So Julia and I are so happy that you've been taking part in these classes and we'd love to see what you are making. Um, because our supplies vary a bit, even though the, the um, consumable supplies are the same in your kit as your friends that are getting kits, the stamps and ink that you're using are different or the elements that you choose from home. So on the, um, on the, in the comments of the video, you can, you can post a picture or post a description of the, of your, um, your projects. And we would really love to see that. So here's two examples using those, that lovely Daffodil Delight paper. Okay, I'm gonna set that one aside. And our third project, clear my desk a little bit here for us. Our third project uses some of those envelopes. We still have a stash of those envelopes that have, were donated to the library and we're grateful uh, because they can have a life even though they got um, some moisture in them and they became sealed. So I wanna teach you another cool thing you can do with envelopes like that. And of course you can take an envelope and seal it up yourself and do this. But um, if you find a stash of this kind of, of envelope that moisture made it seal, then I want you to have some tricks to use it. So these are two, um, two examples that are made from items in your kit. You'll notice you had a selection of papers that are cut um, to, to this shape and they're double-sided papers. You wanna pull out all of those that you can find. You should have four, one of each of four different patterns. And then um, you'll have some cardstock pieces. It's this lovely mauve color, um, navy, yellow, and uh, a burgundy one as well. So based on your color tastes, you can mix and match these items the way you like. I'm just gonna share two examples uh, and you'll have enough materials to make you know, at least two things and perhaps more depending on how you supplement with other items from the kit. So here's that little doily, right? Do you see it here? That little trimmed piece that we cut before. So you wanna have that handy. And then this piece of embossed green paper. This has this wonderful stitched leaf elements that are already um, embossed into the, the cardstock. And again, you don't have to make yours the same as me, but I'm gonna share two different ideas using these supplies and then you can choose to mix and match the way you like. There's also a pre-die cut happy birthday, which is a nice bold black. So it's gonna show up great boldly against these um, lighter colors. And then the envelopes you'll need. Um, and you can just work along with me with one right now if you like. And then if it's a project you enjoy, you could make more than one but we will need to cut off one end of this. One end, so you'll need a paper trimmer or some scissors. I wanna make sure my ink is not gonna be in the way. Okay, so I just need to trim off a little bit from the end of the envelope so that it can open up. So using my paper trimmer, I'm just gonna slide. It's really just like an eighth of an inch maybe. I'm cutting off just a small, um, enough to um, have it be able to open. Okay, so it's on the short side of the envelope I'm cutting. All right. Now the other cut I need to make is for the piece that's gonna go inside the project. Let me show you. We learned last month that a lot of you do enjoy, as, as much fun as surprises are, it's sometimes nice to know where we're heading, right? <laughs> so I wanna give you a clue on what's happening for this project. Here's the envelope. And when you pull on the ribbon, it comes up a treat. And this, I secured it just for the video, but you wouldn't have to, but there's the um, Ghirardelli chocolate inside, or you could put a tea bag um, or a love note or a photo uh, and or money or a gift card or all kinds of options, right? But what's fun is you don't pull it all the way out. Do you see how that it um, it stays in there when I when I pull the ribbon? I'm gonna teach you how to make that mechanism. It's really simple. But because the, the blue card is gonna be sliding in and out, we need to trim it a little bit from, um, 
the, the short set and side. And if you're doing it with scissors, that's fine too. You're just gonna take off maybe a quarter inch or so. Just cut that right away. Okay. So for this project, you do need a hole punch. I'm sorry, I, I forgot to give warning. Sometimes I try to post ahead for people to know what supplies they need, but it's something you can complete later if you don't do it right along with me tonight. But, I have a question. Uh huh. Um, so, if the paper slides easily, does that is that fine or does that's it good? To... Yes, you want it to go in and out. Okay. Yeah. I haven't I haven't cut it down, but it seems to fit. So. Oh, okay. The cutting was actually from the short end. Okay, so, got um, it. Yeah. So this is how it was like this, and I just trimmed a little bit off. You don't really have to, but otherwise the blue paper is going to stick out. It already sticks out a little bit, and this way, it doesn't stick out quite as much. Mine fits all. The <laughs> yeah, you might not even need to cut it off. I'd be curious. Okay. Maybe you don't. Okay. But um, but I just trimmed mine down slightly. Okay. Okay. So now for the outside, I'm going to demonstrate um, the this one. Um, but before I do that, I want to just show you again how to assemble for this yellow one and I'll keep it on screen so you can see it. So for the yellow piece, because basically what we're doing is making a card front and then we're going to put it on this special holder. But the first thing we need to do is just make the card front. So when I made the yellow card front, all I did was layer that green, that fabulous granny apple green stitched piece with adhesive, put that down first. Then I layered my doily and piece of daisy paper. And again, the papers have different sides. You can use your own taste to do that. Okay, so I adhered those things on top. And then I put my happy birthday on top. So this card, all the pieces were ready. I didn't have to do any cutting, except since we already cut the doily ahead. Um, and I just put it together like this. Okay, so for this one, um, I, I only cut a little bit and you'll, you'll notice this is this little otter. He's called Awesome Otter. And he also is a celebration set during this, um, during celebration as a free gift with a purchase. And I just think he's a lot of fun. And here he is, he's ready to, to give you a hug. Um, or in my case for this card, I'm having him hold like a, a lay of flowers here or a, a kind of a daisy chain of flowers. These look like forget me nots to me. So there's a round circle in your kit, a punched out circle. So you could do something similar. You, if you don't have the otter, you could do um, any kind of um, greeting or image because the way to tie the project together is using the flowers cut out of this paper. You might otherwise not put the otter with this flower paper, right? But I, I like the paper and I like the otters. And so sometimes a crazy combo works. So he, it works because I'm, he's holding these forget-me-nots that are from some of the designer series paper, okay? So if you choose to do that, maybe on this one, I'll cut out some of the pink flower. Well, it depends. Basically, you want to have, you're creating a, um, a geometric pattern with, um, with the designer series paper, and, and yours might look different. I use the tulips up here, and then I used a part of this down here that had some of the, the um, um, I must have trimmed the green down. Yeah, I trimmed the green so that there'd be space to put another little picture here, another color here. Um, let's do it a little differently this time, just so you get another idea. I'm gonna save this one though for that yellow card in case you like that layout. So you could just leave these two like this, um, or you could, um, I'm going to change it up a little bit and I'm going to use this black one as a base and then I'm going to cut some of these little pink flowers out instead pink and white and make just try something a little bit different okay so I'll keep this here you can see the original one. And what I'm going to do is just fussy cut some of these little flowers out. And I don't have another circle right now, but I do have in the kit are a number of tags. So you can use um, one of the tags that's in your kit if you 
if you want to make more cards like this. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's kind of large, isn't it? Let's see what else is in my kit. I've got a smaller circle one, but this might be big enough. Okay, so I'm gonna just cut a few flowers on this one, and I'm not gonna include the otter this time. Uh, if you're interested in the otter though, let me know. But I, um, I'm going to use a greeting instead. So I just need a few flowers to kind of pull together the design elements from the card. And I keep cutting that, turning the paper, not the scissors. There we go. So there's just a little trio of flowers. <coughs> Excuse me. And now I can <coughs> choose a greeting from the stamp set special moments. And there are lots of little ones here. Hello, sunshine. Thanks. Good luck. Just a little high from me. The thing I like about you is everything. Those are wonderful. <laughs> so I'm going to do that one. The thing I like about you is everything. And that one, let's see, there it is. Let's see if it's a little too big, I can choose a different one, but I think it will work. Yeah, and I can move my flowers around. First, I'll do the stamping, then I'll add the flowers, okay? So let's take a block. What's nice about these photopolymer and cling stamps is you can store them easily in a thinner container and then just you take them out as you need them for to adhere to the clear block. Okay, the thing I like about you is everything. And then I can put my little flowers around here. Fingers are. Now I used up all my pearls, but pearls would look nice in these flower centers too. Okay. And because I don't have a ribbon right now for that hole, I'm gonna cover it up, cover it up. Maybe cut out a few more flowers. How about one of these yellow ones? So I, I really enjoy fussy cutting. Not everybody likes the, the um, cutting. Uh, so remember, you can stamp, you can color, you can print out things. And one layout would be just these, these pieces put together, just side by side. That looks lovely too. Um, or if you offset them. What I did for the otter card was I stamped on one block. And this was a color block pattern. So then I filled the bottom here with this other pattern. Um, this one, I might just leave with them side by side like that. You're going to notice this card gets really more special when we add the dimensionals. So that's a, a fun thing. And again, I'll try to have some of those be included next time for you because they do really give, um, create kind of a shadow look on your project. So using just these strips of, of designer series paper, I'm going to create just a side by side pattern. Some more of that rose to show. And then I can put this on with the dimensionals. You'll see the little otter friend is popped up with dimensionals and I do think it makes a, a it elevates literally the design. There we go. You can see it just kind of creates a shadow because of that raised image there. So here's the thing I like about you is everything. I'm just gonna center that. And then I'm gonna just put a few little dots of glue where I want the flowers to go. We'll cover up that part that has the hole because I don't have other ribbon right handy. If you do, you could certainly put ribbon through your tag holes. To tuck it in, make a bouquet. And now the fun part comes because I'm going to show you the mechanism so that you can have a surprise slide slider card where something comes out when you pull the ribbon. There. Okay. So we have options, right? Just combining strips of paper, uh, tag elements, 
uh, fussy cuttings and things so that pulls together the design elements. And I'll show you the sample one again. What we're going to do is we're going to have a hole at the top of the envelope and, and it goes through to the back. And so we slide this in and out and it, it won't come out because it's, um, the paper is secured in there by the ribbon. Now on my sample, I forgot to cover up the part of the envelope that's the back. It doesn't really matter. It's obviously the back of the envelope, but I have an opportunity to cover it up. When I put my otter on top here, I can cover up. And so the back will just be a clean piece. You could write on it, you could decorate it and have this be on the other side, perhaps. Both of your sides could be covered. But let's go ahead and adhere this to the front of the envelope. Now you wanna make sure that the opening, the little, um, the opening to the envelope here is at the top. That's going to be the part that the slider goes in and out. And just secure that. And now here, now is where you'll need a hole punch. Um, a lot of people have hole punches at home and it doesn't really matter what size the hole is. If it's too, if you have a hole punch that's too small, a trick is to kind of punch it several times right close to itself and it will make it a larger hole. Um, if you have a standard one, like a school um, might have or uh, that you have with your office supplies, that will be just fine. Mine is slightly smaller than that tonight. So I'm going to make the hole. And now I have, and if you don't have a hole punch, you don't have to do the ribbon part too. You could just put treasures inside here and not, but the slider thing is pretty cool. So I want to teach you about that. Now, um, let's see if I can cut, here's my ribbon. Your ribbon is navy blue. Uh, most of you have navy blue in your kit. There's, if you have yellow though, that will work. Um, but I think most of you have the, um, the yellow, okay? So what we're gonna do is put the, the um, I gotta think it through so that I do it the right way. Um, because what we have to do is thread the ribbon through, okay? And now we're going to carefully slide the blue paper down. Now, if your ribbon kind of sticks, and then I'm going to show you another way to do this. But if your ribbon is cooperative, um, and I did that. Yeah, that's correct. Let me make sure. Yep, OK. Sometimes I sometimes the things seem counterintuitive, if, even if you've done them several times. So this is a project where um, when I'm with kids and students and people at the library and friends, I say that you're doing paper engineering. It's science, it's math, it's engineering. And so um, sometimes I have to slow down and rethink my steps and that's okay. But um, I wanna show you again, I have my ribbon through both holes and it's like this, okay? So I made it even. And then I'm gonna take my card, cardstock and carefully push it down. Um, if your cardstock, um, let's say it's a, the ribbon isn't moving very well, then what you do, I don't want to confuse things more, but I want to show you this option in case the ribbon is doesn't want to slide in very easily at first. Then what you do is wrap it around the cardstock, put it in the envelope, and then feed them through the holes once the ribbon's already done and tucked in. I know the, sat, the texture of the satin ribbon, um, I found to be a little more grabby. And so it, this is why I want you to know this solution if the other way doesn't work. All right, so now we have this piece coming out from both sides and you wanna make sure that it's um, not any extra ribbon in there. And then you can tie a knot at the top, not really tightly, but I do it um, like a square knot. And then this is the part that's going to slide up and down in your card. And it doesn't come out, see, it stays inside. So you can put your tea bag or your um, candy in there. I'm gonna just anchor it with a tiny bit of adhesive so that it will be in the right place when they pull it out. And I can trim these, right? These are a little bit lengthy. 
And the blue ribbon was cut generously for you. So you do have some extra you can play with. And there we have it. Isn't that fun? So here's the yellow one. This one has the chocolate. Which one would you pick? <laughs> the chocolate one or the tea one with the otter? Or Definitely the otter with the chocolate. chocolate. Maybe we'd want to swap it up. What do you think, Julia? Definitely chocolate. Definitely <laughs> chocolate. Okay. I love, yeah. go ahead. Definitely chocolate. Definitely chocolate. Okay. Well, the Ghirardelli um, works well because it's a nice flat package. Um, mm -hmm. You can make these different sizes with different envelopes and different um, box construction for really any kind of candy. Uh, but this, these, both the tea and the Ghirardelli chocolate work really well with the standard size envelope. So I hope you'll have fun exploring this, um, this technique of the slider card and, uh, and that that will be something fun for you to make for someone you care about or for a, a, a random act of kindness even. It would be a fun way to, when you go through the line at, um, at the bank or at Dunkin' Donuts, you could give it to somebody as a little love you. I'm thinking on the back, I could write the word pull and a little arrow pointing. Oh, to you're smart. You're very smart, Julia. <laughs> right here, and I don't even have a pen handy, but write the word pull. Very good, because I handed it to my husband earlier and I'm like, do you know what you, is it clear what to do? And he did tug on it, but it, it's, it's, not, it's not obvious, is it? So right on the back here, the word pull is a great strategy. Very good. Okay. Very I can good. see if I yeah. send it to my stepmom and she would immediately to untie the bow. <laughs> True. Yep. So you want to make a knot. Yeah. Make it like a knot. And then they'd have to investigate a little bit and they'd see the word pull. Very good thinking. Great. Now, before we say goodnight, I want to just show you a couple of the other things that are in your kit and, um, and share some inspiration, ask a question of you. I love um, to make books. When I was a teacher in Vermont, I took some special courses to learn how to make books. And these are some supplies that were in your kit. It's uh, designer series paper like this, that's, that's already folded there for you. And then several pieces of cardstock. And so a simple book construction, um, if people are interested, then I will include a needle I think it's okay to do that as long as people know, Julie, and I can make it safe so it, was, it wouldn't poke anybody. They, it would be packaged so you'd know it was in there. Um, it's really easy and fun to make a book like this, on an easy three-hole binding, and I thought that might be something we would enjoy doing together. I know the class is called card making, but paper um, can be used in lots of different ways, and this is really just a big card. <laughs> I'm say it's a multi-page card. <laughs> yes, yes. So what's fun is you can create, you know, pockets and tags that can pull out one way or another. Here's another use for an envelope. I just cut it in half, and now it's a little pocket inside a card. So if you wanted to get right to work on these, using these supplies, what you could do is tear off that little strip and then you fold this in half and you've already got a nice card. So you don't have to, um, you can put it, send it right away to somebody as a card, you know, layer in maybe a pocket like that with some tea um, if you wished, something like that. But if you're interested in learning about the book, I would, I'll give you new papers next month. So you can use these things for anything you like, but I thought it would be a fun, um, it's kind of, you might say it's an adv advanced technique with paper crafting, but it's really very simple. And I'd love to share that with you and to learn if others of you are, um, enjoy bookmaking and have done that in the past. My brother lives in Japan. And when he was a, um, a junior, junior abroad student in Kyoto, many years ago, um, that's when he was introduced to bookmaking and shared some with me. And at that time I was living in Vermont. So a lot of good memories wrapped up in, in bookmaking for me. So that's just to let you know those things in the kit, anything that's left over is really just for you to have fun playing with. You'll also have this fun, um, some palm trees, right? Uh, a little snail, we used our happy birthday, didn't we? The little snail with a heart. He's ready to go someplace fun. And then this envelope template, which um, yeah. could be used for a number of things as well. So this is just little extra love yous to, to play with and explore your creativity. If you're not up to the challenge on it right now, just put it in a spot with some other um, where you can add other stash. So when you find a button or you find some ribbon that tied up a gift or you are inspired by something you see in a magazine. 
you know, have a kind of a stash so your creative energy can can pull out from those those items. Let me bring back in before we say goodnight. I'll bring back in the projects we made so we can see them together. And the the book making one is just a little bit of a tease that that's something I'd love to share next month. So, but we'll be using different uh, supplies. You don't have to worry about keeping anything from this kit. Any questions? It's been a lot of fun to be with you tonight. And we thank those of you watching on Facebook and those of you um, who will be catching our replay on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, come see Julia at the library. The library is alive and well. It's been alive and well throughout the pandemic and it's really impressive. There's some great art exhibits right now yes. that I've been enjoying as I visit. Um, and I encourage you, if you can join me in the morning, 10 o'clock, I'll be at the library, um, but uh, come and come and see the fun things happening in our community. Yeah, tomorrow morning, the 10 o'clock is uh, live in person. And you when you bring $20, you get a kit that is uh, very fun. Uh, lots of stamps and, and things in the kits. Yes, thanks, Julia. And that's all for you to take home. So the kit has supplies to make eight to 12 cards, um, but then it also includes the stamp the stamp set, the some ink, um, all the things that you need in order to, to continue your crafting. So we'd love to welcome you there. Right, and that's the $20 covers that. So. Yes, thanks okay. Julia. Terrific. Good night, Thank everybody. You. Stay warm. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you. You're welcome.